So before my PC blew up, around the new year, I was feeling a bit dusty from going out and partying way too hard. Not really, I don't go outside, but uh, during the holiday season, I was looking for a short little project I could do for a bit of fun uh, that wasn't going to be Servicade. And uh, one thing that a few people have asked me for in the past um, stood out, and that was uh, Deadly Lens. We're going back to Deadly Lens. Uh, we're going to dust off that haunted camera, perform a little exorcism, and give it some sheen. So let's see how good we can get this during the weekend and uh, see if we can come up with some new features. Um, this is almost like my own little game jam of sorts, but it's more like a prototype jam, three day long weekend thing. Proto jam? Nah. Anyway, I was going to see how much I could do with the camera and how far I could take it within this three day weekend. Um, I really liked this mechanic when I originally made it. Um, I've always had a soft spot for games with photography slotted in there. Uh, you could use this to add flair to your game. Like in Breath of the Wild, there's a few side quests with the camera and you could make it more of a central theme like in Fatal Frame series or Phasmophobia or even, you know, like Pokemon Snap. Um, also, before I go any further, I should point out that this is not a tutorial. Um, although I will be going into a lot of detail um, and I will be releasing the source code, um, links in the description. Um, if you want me to make a full tutorial series on this, hit the like button. If I get a thousand, I'll make a tutorial, but that's probably not going to happen, so let's not worry too much about it. Um, I spent the morning cloning and cleaning up the Deadly Lens project, removing everything except for the digital camera and the character controller, which took a lot longer than you'd think. I wanted to make sure it was clean because I wanted to release this code to you all and it needs to look good. Um, I can't just copy the game project and start working over the top of it. The other thing that I had to do was update the camera model because boy, like seriously. But I remember this was kind of intentional at the time since the resolution was so small, I knew I could get away with this level of detail. Once I had those two things down, it was time to start working on the camera album. I already had designed the basic point and shoot back when I made Deadly Lens, so I didn't really need to redo them. Although, here's a quick refresher on how this works. The player presses the right mouse button to play an animation that can raise the camera up. The camera has a viewport and you can use that to frame your shot. When you press the left mouse button, another animation is played to mimic a camera shot. And there's a very simple script that simply saves the viewport texture in a predetermined folder. If that folder doesn't exist at runtime, it's created. So how I keep track of these is really very simple as well. And I should say there are way better ways of doing this, especially if you wanted more detail on the image. Say for example, the date and time the photo is taken, what's in the photo, that's probably important most of the time. Um, the exposure and the focus details. All of those stats could be held in a JSON file and accessible when you are looking at the photo. Or if you wanted the player to take a photo of a specific thing, all of those kinds of things are just, they're possible, but I'm not doing them here. All I'm doing is keeping track of the number of photos taken. That's really all I need in order to call them back, since you don't necessarily need to know the file name of the photo you want to open, as you will see in my new album viewer for the camera. Um, it's fully populated with all the photos that we've taken and the game has no idea what the file is called. Okay, so day two, after I cleaned up the game and the file structure, it was time to turn my attention to the feature I actually wanted to add, which was being able to read back the photos to an album browser, much like you see in your phone when you open up your gallery. Um, as I mentioned on my original Deadly Lens video, uh, reading back in the screenshots that we saved with when a player takes the photo is a little bit more complicated than recalling a normal texture. At its core, the UI is just a scroll container and a grid container. There's nothing really that fancy. In fact, if reading in the images was less complicated, I'd call this whole process simple and easy. So how do you load in an image from an external source? This is an image that's not in your project directory that would warrant a different procedure. This technique for images or textures that were either created during runtime or loaded externally. Uh, loading imported resources requires you to use the load or resource loader.load function 
loading non-imported external resources require you to replicate the import process at runtime first, which is already done in the editor, and then store a reference to the loaded resource somewhere for it to be accessible later on. So it's not possible to use load for those resources because they were not actually imported, but created at runtime instead, which is pretty confusing and it took me a while to figure out how to get these images back into the game. You can't use load, you instead need to use load PNG from buffer, which asks for a buffer, which is a pull byte array of the size of the file in bytes, to which you might reply, what? Uh, don't worry too much about what this is, I'm not going to. Just know, in order to feed a texture or image externally, you need to feed in the image this way. First, you use getLen to get the size of the file in bytes. Then you can take that to create a buffer. And you can see that I've nested these two together in my code. Once you have the buffer, you can instance an image and load the PNG from the buffer. Then instance an image texture and use create from image to get an image texture. Now you've done that, you can simply assign it to any texture rect. And okay, that's step one. Step two. So now we can load up an image and we can go about building the gallery. Like I showed before, the game knows how many photos you've taken. I should note that on startup, I have a script that goes through and counts the number of files in the photo folder. By the way, I would point out that I know using a counter for the photos is pretty basic. Um, it should be a JSON that converts to a dictionary. That way you could hold a bit more information, like I said before. Um, but my approach is a little bit simpler and it works for this example. So when the level runs, we build the gallery. This is pretty straightforward. I grab the photo count from the tracker, compare it to the number of photos already in the gallery, then add in any missing using the two functions set up earlier. There's a specific texture rect that I have for this that can work with the mouse over effect and store the photo. Uh, so when you hover over the photo in the gallery, you get this nice scaling effect. This is pretty easy to achieve with a tween and the built-in function set on top, which is built into canvas items. I had a pretty hard time making sure the photo was above the others when I was scaling before I found this function, but I guess it always pays to read the docs. If you click on a photo, it will open up in the main screen, which about does it for the UI side of things. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. Um, I learned a lot more about the Godot UI in this process, which was really handy, and some cool tricks with manipulating files, obviously. The biggest challenge was making what was visible in the viewfinder match what came out as a photo. You see, viewports aren't really meant to be used this way. At least that's the assumption I'm making after working on this. There's a setting called Keep 3D Linear, and what this does is make your render target look normal. It does not apply an sRGB color conversion because if it did, it would look weird because your final viewport the one that the player sees the world from would also apply that converter and it gives a washed out brightness to the viewport that looks like the lighting is being applied when it really isn't. Um, so you keep that checked, right? Well, the screenshot we take from it will not have the sRGB filter applied to it either. So it's gonna look dark and not all what we were expecting. Unchecked, the photo looks right, but the viewport looks wrong. Checked, the viewport looks right, but the photo looks wrong. So either way, you're screwed. Um, unless you uncheck it as a part of your photo taking sequence, which works really well. Be it, it's a little slow. Looking back, however, I would probably opt for a main HUD camera like in Pokemon Snap, Breath of the Wild, or pretty much any other camera game, rather than an external viewport style like the one we've done here. There's a lot of work in getting it to look good. If the main point of the game is to take a photo, it doesn't really make sense. Um, then there's a lot of trickery going on to make the viewport look right that you could avoid if you simply put a UI over the main viewport, uh, which is a lot simpler to do and it communicates the same point. 
After I had mastered the photos and the UI, I spent a little bit of time building out some scenes for the player to wander around in and take some photos. Uh, one from Neoma van der Steen on Sketchfab, which is a city scene of a CC in the sunset. Really nice, relaxing scene. Then I also added a scene from Matthias Tossens, also from Sketchfab. This one is a Japanese town celebrating Tanabata. Also has some really cool vibes, spent a lot of time playing with the lighting, getting the scenes to pop in a way that I haven't done before. Really glad I decided to use external assets as my level design is not really at a point where I could make this look nearly as beautiful as these guys have. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't really meant to be a tutorial, mostly a demonstration of what's possible. The source code is available and you can also download the game itself if you want to have a wander around in these towns and see what you can find, although the player controller is not particularly nice. There's a lot of potential with this kind of thing, you could easily make an entire game from this prototype. You would need to add a few extra things like object detection and a more fleshed out UI, but it's entirely possible. Anyway, that's enough of me going on about digital, digital cameras. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, and of course, all the links to this project are down in the description. Uh, until next time, I'm Isaac, I am ChefDev, goodbye.